With every passing NFL season, there are some players that change the cultural landscape of the NFL, change how the game is played, or change how players are evaluated from an organizational perspective and a coaching perspective. Today, we are going to give you our most influential players of the last decade. And if you enjoy our content, please subscribe, leave a like, and let us know what you think down in the comments below. To start things off, in my opinion, the most influential player when it comes to cultural impact on the NFL is Odell Beckham Jr. Now, someone might hear me say this and get upset because they don't like Odell's antics when he was with the Giants. They blame him for what happened with Baker Mayfield in Cleveland, and they are not a fan of him in general because of just the amount of attention he gets. When someone gets popular, they always have haters. And at the end of the day, haters are unwilling to admit just how influential he was on the NFL, how influential he was on football, and the overall impact that he had. When Odell made his infamous catch versus the Dallas Cowboys, he became almost as big as the NFL in general, and he popularized one-handed catches. One-handed catches became so popular that fans showed up to his warmups just to watch him make one-handed hand catches in warmups. He was such a big deal in 2016 that he was, as a year two player, on the cover of Madden, and Madden built their game around the idea of spectacular catches. And I think anyone that played Madden 16 remembers how infuriating it was when people would just chuck up streaks all day, get it to work simply by holding the aggressive catch button. He caused a game to be built around something that he popularized. Since he made that catch versus the Cowboys week in and week out we are seeing one-handed catch highlights from high school players we see it from middle school players we see it from peewee players we see it from college and the NFL more often than than we ever saw before he made that catch in 2016 if it were not for Odell players wouldn't be attempting these catches as much as they do now allows them to extend their wingspan than if they went for it with two hands as also when it comes to the cultural impact when people catch anything with one hand whether it be a football whether it be a book someone taught I don't know why I'm saying a book but a book someone tossed to another person and they catch it with one hand they say Odell much like when you throw a paper ball into a trash can with a fadeaway like you say Kobe that shows that he's had almost as much of a culture impact if not more than Kobe Bryant did and he also hasn't been as live as live as long as Kobe Bryant was finally he's also the most followed player in the NFL on any social media platform so that just shows that he's more popular than every star quarterback in the NFL from a social media perspective he popularized one-handed catches and he's one of the biggest names in NFL history and I think people sometimes just don't accept that. The beauty of Odell, he had one of the best starts to a career we have ever seen from a wide receiver. One of the three or four best rookie seasons. One of the better second years. Injuries eventually caught up to him, but he was, for a good stretch of time, the best wide receiver in football. And he has done more than any other player to inc increase the drop rate around the NFL and in high school and in middle school, because people now do go for one-handed catches. Personally, I have never played Madden to the extent the young man over here has, whichever direction he is uh, oriented on our camera. But I was aware that Odell caused the game to be changed. Cover athlete, cover of Madden Mobile, very popular with the fans. And it is a shame he has fallen off. There's a reason he has the haters. The off-field antics are salacious is the best way to put it but he was a very impactful player he is someone you you think about football in the mid 2000 or the mid 2010s you think about Odell Beckham Jr. and that's really what I think the point of the list is amazing player amazing cultural impact caused people to play the game a slightly different way the comparison to Kobe is stupid Kobe was bigger than him let's not get into that but I do agree with you very impactful definitely deserves a spot on the list well he's not as all-time great as Kobe is in basketball as he is in football but I'm making the comparison between everyone who does doesn't even watch football saying Odell when they catch something with one hand versus everyone saying Kobe when they shoot anything into a trash can. Yeah, the problem is like that little Odell catch thing isn't even the most iconic expression when you catch something. That's called getting moss, but Odell is a second place in terms of that. But very, we're not going to get into some max. That's very impactful. The second player we're going to talk about today is Patrick Mahomes. And sure, you're going to say, oh, he's just a really good quarterback, but he is so much more than that. You look at the guys who dominated the early 2000s, the 2010s, the Tom Brady's, the Peyton Mangs, the statues in the pocket, the gunslinger who would rarely move their feet, have about five total rushing touchdowns in their career, and would still get their teams to Super Bowls. Then you look at Patrick Mahomes, who has all the arm talent, all the accuracy those guys do, but he is actually mobile. He's got a big frame, big body, trunky, coastal, can move around the pocket. When he gets out, he's the most dangerous quarterback in the NFL outside the pocket, save for maybe Lamar Jackson. Amazing thrower on the run, and has really caused the NFL to change how they evaluate quarterbacks. Now you see guys like Josh Allen, like Justin Herbert, come into the league in that Patrick Mahomes mold. They are replicas of Mahomes. You think Josh Allen would have the free license to do what he does in Buffalo of her or of Mahomes and come along a season earlier and done in Canada? 
Kansas City? No. You think Justin Herbert would have his license to run around outside the pocket or pass the ball deep as often as he does in LA if Mahomes hadn't come in the very same division as him and won the MVP in Super Bowl? No. Mahomes is an all-time talent. He has changed how quarterback is played across the league. Yeah, and of course, hindsight is always 20-20 when we take a look back at players and then reassign draft grades and say, oh, why didn't this player go number first overall? During the 2017 NFL draft process, Patrick Mahomes was constantly mocked at the end of the draft, and he eventually wound up getting picked 10th overall, and during the people mock drafting, people even had Deshaun Kaiser going in front of him because he was just a raw talent that threw the ball over all over the place, tended to improvise, and had an inconsistent throwing motion. That's what he was going through in 2017 when he was getting drafted, but then he set the stage for everyone else. He went to two Super Bowls, won a Super Bowl MVP, won an MVP, had a 50 touchdown season during his rookie season. He has been extremely successful and he has set the tone for teams when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks. Everyone is looking to replicate the chief success with Patrick Mahomes. In 2019, after Patrick Mahomes' 50 touchdown season, Kyler Murray was going into the draft. A lot of people had doubts because he was short, but he was so talented in other aspects when it comes to accuracy, ability to escape the pocket, his throw power, he can chuck the ball, basically the whole field, but it was just due to his height. And I think that Patrick Mahomes' success with all the questions they had about him, whether it's his throwing motion, uh, turnovers, tendency to improvise, I don't think Kyler Murray, there's a, I think there's a greater chance Kyler Murray doesn't go first overall if it is not for those things. And then most recently, I think the best example of this thought process comes in 2021, not this most recent draft, but the draft before that. Mac Jones is regarded as the most pro-ready quarterback in the NFL draft, yet he didn't even go close to first overall. He was the fifth quarterback taken. And then when you take a look at some of those quarterbacks taken before him, Zach Wilson went second overall because the person they were comparing him to was Patrick Mahomes. He had all of the same strengths as Patrick Mahomes, all of the same weaknesses weaknesses and he still went second overall because of those things maybe he falls to 10 like Patrick Mahomes does or even further in the draft if Patrick Mahomes doesn't exist same with Trey Lance I think if Patrick Holmes doesn't exist and they don't see the Chiefs front office trusting their coaching staff to develop Mahomes' talent. They don't go after Trey Lance because he's so big, because he's so fast, because he's so has such a strong arm. I don't think they go for him and we don't know if those players are going to wash out, but I think Patrick Holmes for the long haul has definitely put in the back of people's minds that you should look at a player's raw talent, their arm strength, ability to just make plays and maybe you should bet on that. So I think as we move towards the future, I think he's changed that basically forever. I'm sure it'll bounce back eventually. Some other pro-ready quarterback, someone in the Tom Brady mold, even though he was a sixth-round draft pick who just throws a bunch of check downs, is going to rise to dominance. And it might shift back. I would go back and forth between run-heavy and pass-heavy offenses. But Bones has certainly changed the impact and landscape of quarterbacks for the foreseeable future. There's... Not as many defensive players that you think of, and when it comes to the landscape of the NFL being popularized or being dominant for year after year or really influencing the game, and I think the most influential defensive player of the last decade has to be Aaron Donald. He has been so unique, and I think he has a certain allure to him that isn't quite on Lawrence Taylor's level, but it can be at least be slightly compared to the allure that Lawrence Taylor has so many years later. He's been a pro bowler every single year of his career, has been an all-pro seven of his eight years won three defensive MVPs, now has a Super Bowl, was the best player on a Super Bowl winning team. He has, as an interior pass rusher, has a season with 20 and a half sacks in 2018, only has two seasons in his career with less than 10 sacks. So I think he's part kind of been one of those players on defense that has been a catalyst about getting away from the prototypical size that you look for for a while it was always defensive tackles and interior players have to be you know six foot five 320 pounds and bigger guys is what you wanted on there but I feel like he's kind of been a catalyst in that change whether it's smaller quicker interior defensive linemen or smaller quicker linebackers that are more versatile being able to maybe come off the edge or go play some coverage I think he's been a big piece of that movement so when it comes to defensive players, I think he's definitely the most influential of the last decade. Here's where you and I disagree. I feel Aaron Donald is somewhat of a product of the NFL's game changing and exemplifies the absolute peak of dominance that can be from because now we, the NFL passed the ball a bunch. It is a pass happy league. The best teams in the NFL all sling it around. They were always going to need interior defensive linemen who were going to be pass rushers. That 6'5", 350 pound run stopper space eater does not quite exist the same way it used to. Aaron Donald is simply the best at and made people realize that, oh, an interior defensive lineman, someone who's not a J.J. Watt, an outside linebacker, a Miles Garrett, he can have the same if not more of an impact 
as those guys. And you see guys like Chris Jones come to the league, pass rushers. They try moving him out to defensive end, replicating what an edge truly does, but realize, hey, these guys, these small, stocky guys who have a little bit of speed and can certainly get for the quarterback are best on the inside. I think he's a product of that. I think he also draws more attention to defensive tackles than we have ever seen before. How many people before Aaron Donald rose to prominence, casual fans, do you think could name more than one or two defensive linemen? Probably not many. They probably just named the ones on their team. Aaron Donald is an NFL superstar playing an often overlooked position and is going to change the way smaller, shorter defensive players view themselves for the foreseeable future. There's 5'10", 5'9", guys in college at D1 level who are now saying, okay, I might not make it to the NFL, but I've got a legitimate shot of just being this super fast, super strong brick wall who can get after the quarterback. I don't have to be the stereotypical mole. That's why I think Donald's impact is. But I think it was because the NFL changed that he had that impact. Yeah, but I do, like you said, uh, I kind of agree with you as far as the NFL was is going to change. I just think he was a part of kind of speeding up that change. Speaking to what you said, he showed everyone and put on a display for a, on a large scale that you could be successful as an interior pass rusher, especially if you're quicker, stronger, and faster than the guy in front of you. So I think he kind of just put that on display and probably opened up more people's eyes to that possibility. I am more on the lines that we have not quite seen his full impact yet. We are just now going to start to see the defensive tackles who are molded in the image of Aaron Donald make their way into the NFL in the next few draft classes who grew up watching him. And I know Patrick Mahomes, what you say, had a giant impact. He came into the league much more recently than Donald, but it's easier to have a big quarterback with a bunch of arm down. It's uncommon to have the little defensive tackles. Now, finally, I've got one more guy I want to mention, and it's Darren Sproles. And he's not at the same level of player as the other three guys we mentioned. Might be similar to Odell. He made an all-decade team, but... (laughs) Sproles is a special player. He's a five foot six running back who had a prolific career in the NFL, and he didn't do so running the ball. Almost every year of his career, if not every year of his career, he had more receiving yards than he had rushing yards. He was a threat out of the backfield to catch a pass and take it upfield. And then you look at guys now like Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, what he does in that Packers offense, and you see, okay, they're kind of following in the mold of Sproles. It's a pass heavy league now, but Sproles pioneered the running back being more of a receiving threat than they used to be. He was so such a dominant force, and he was never a superstar type player, but I think teams looked at Sproles, who had no business being a running back with his frame, and said, okay, if this little guy who's athletic can work in this setting, imagine what we can do with our actual running backs. Imagine what we can do with a Christian McCaffrey. It's why CMC had a 1,000-yard receiving season and a 1,000-yard rushing season. They are not afraid to hit the running back as much as they hit the number one or number two receiver. Without Sproles, I don't think that's as common yet. It may be getting there, but Sproles was the pioneer of that. I'm kind of going to go with a slightly different direction when it comes to Sproles' impact. First, he played for 15 seasons in the NFL, which is absurd. That is a long time to play in the NFL as someone who's as small as he was, or just just in general. I don't even know why I'm mentioning that. If you're not a quarterback, 15 years is insane. (laughs) Yeah, especially for a running back of all players, someone who's getting hit every time they touch the ball, whether it be receiving or uh, running the ball. Now, something that is interesting about his career is that every single season he was in the NFL. He had more receiving yards, except for one season. Then he did rushing yards, which that one season also later in his career, so it doesn't really matter. But I think the biggest impact he had was being part of that movement towards more of a running back by committee type backfield where you have multiple running backs. Maybe you have that one power running back that's really your goal line guy or early downs. And then you have Darren Sproles who comes in and is the receiving back on long downs or third downs when you need to get the first down. And you can't run the ball because the defense is looking for it. So I think that's where he had the biggest impact as being kind of the gadget player. Uh, He was on the all decades team for being an offensive flex. I think that's what it was labeled as when they released the all decade team. So I think that's where he had the biggest impact, kind of that movement towards running back by committee rather than just having the one bell cow back that did everything, whether he was only good at one, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> I get what you mean. There's going to be someone in our comment section saying, eh, actually, back in 1993, old Sticky Fingers Felton has the most dynamic receiving back you've ever seen. He was only on the field a third of the time. <laughs> There's always someone. And Darren Sproles also finished his career with the third most receiving touchdowns by any running back ever. So he does have that to his name. That will not last for long, though. Eventually, that's going to get rolled over when the new class of guys he inspired take over. That, that could definitely happen. That has been the video. Let us know who you think the most influential players are of the last decade. Let us know what you think about the guys that we mentioned. Is there someone you think that should have been on the list? And I have to think if someone makes it this far, or even if they're watching halfway through, they're going to mention Tom 
Tom Brady. Sorry we didn't include him. He's been playing for 40 years. And I think Patrick Mahomes in the short term over the last 10 years has had much of a different influence and different type of impact. So let us know what you think. Like the video, subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.